Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And I am sure that many of you, after seeing this story come out on MSNBC, the interview Rachel uh, Maddow uh, actually received a record number of views. I think some like 4 million people tuned in to that broadcast as she interviewed Lev Parnas, Lev Parnas, the Ukrainian uh, born man who uh, very close ties to President Trump. Also, Anderson Cooper on CNN interviewed him, and I'm sure many of our uh, very special friends that do love Trump, that believe that he is called of God, uh, feel like this is nothing but a sham and yet another blackmail against the President of the United States. But what's kind of interesting to me is that what... Uh, Mr. Parnas said in the interview, uh, in both interviews, in fact, and I didn't get the chance to see the entire interview as, as, as of yet that he did with uh, Rachel Maddow, but just from the information that I've seen thus far only corroborates what I've shared with you in the interview that we did uh, back, uh, how long ago was that now? This was back, yeah, November 10th, 2019. Now, I actually, a year before that, I un, uh, unfolded the story about uh, Paul J. Manafort, Rick Gates, Rick Davis, their connections to uh, Putin, uh, the Putin chef, uh, all those different ties there. Through my same source uh, that, I, that had given me the information, given me the, um, well, he only gave me about 25% of a thousand page document that showed, in his uh, estimate, organized crime, corruption uh, at the very highest levels, uh, money laundering, and, and he believes that President Trump is just one figure of many that is involved in this. I shared that story out there, and when I did, of course, our friends that do love Trump really came against me over it. Uh, they say you're just trying to make yourself famous, that type stuff. I, I don't care about fame. I just tell you straight up, I'm not interested. I'm interested in Christ. That's all I'm interested in and nothing else. But I am interested in telling the truth. And even like the video we did last night, I ended up just turning the comments off because I realize the more you try to tell the truth, the more people just don't get it. They think you're anti-American or anti-Israel. Oh, you must be anti-Semitic. I have you know, the only people that really seem to stand up and tell the truth about the crimes that are done in the state of Israel are Jewish people, or those Jews that ended up becoming believers in the Messiah. Unfortunately, not many Christians have the, uh, what would we say, how would you call that? You, you, you just don't have the courage to make the stand for truth. Christ did when he was there 2,000 years ago. He also called out the government of his day. Uh, and he was not popular. The majority of the people hated him. It was a minority that loved him. And it was the minority that stood by him, even at the point when they were crucifying him. So what can we expect? He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you as well. Uh, so as we deal with these situations that are happening, both in the United States, uh, and of course we did, we revealed the information uh, of the downing of the plane, uh, I did get an extra confirmation from my Middle East source there that there is an investigation ongoing, but he did tell me the ultimate responsibility does lie with Iran. He said Iran should have never allowed the plane to take off. So I give him credit for that, uh, for making that stance. He actually stood with the United States on that issue because he, he wanted me to let you guys know as well it was Iran's fault for letting the plane take off. He said, but it is true that Iran is investigating uh, a possible uh, hacking of the system when this all happened. So it's going to be a blame game no matter what. But as I said to one of the people that made the comment in there, oh, you're just becoming more anti-American. No, you know, Americans need to stand up for the truth. This is what's so wrong in this nation. 9-11 happened, 3,000 people lost their lives. 3,000 Americans lost their lives and it was blamed on Iraq? When there was absolutely zero evidence of Iraq's involvement? Oh, then we decided it was Al-Qaeda. But what do we do? We fund Al-Qaeda. Uh, you know, it's really strange the way things go. 
At the end of the broadcast, I'm going to share with you when I interviewed uh, a congressman, uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, his former congressman, Garrett, but he was actually the congressman of the United States at the time we interviewed Congressman Garrett, where he talks about ISIS militants and the Turkish government working with them. Well, well, that's a different subject. Let's get into what's going on. This is really a breaking story, though, with Lev Parnas. I want to play the first part of Rachel Maddow, uh, the, uh, where she's talking here on MSNBC about the interview there, just to kind of set the stage for you. And then we're going to go to a couple of different places in here because there is evidence being spoke about on this uh, program. And we know that evidence, just like in many other cases, we know the evidence. And of course, the truth is always going to hurt. I hate to say it, but it's going to hurt. Uh, and for those of our Christian friends that view this bro broadcast at tune in, let me just remind you that when Jesus was offered all the kingdoms of this world, he turned it down flatly. Satan said they all belonged to him. And Jesus didn't argue with him, did he? So why don't we stand for truth? really take a true stand for Christ. Quit standing for all these political figures. Pray for them. Hey, I'm, all, I'm perfectly okay with that. have no problem with that. But at the end of the day, what can I say? Listen in. Lawrence O'Donnell, good evening, Lawrence. Good evening, Rachel. Really an extraordinary hour. I, I think a lot of us, uh, as we were watching, had one fundamental question. Why is he doing this? Why, why has he decided to basically turn on his friends in the conspiracy and talk about the conspiracy? So what seemed to emerge today when I was talking with him during the course of the interview and talking to him about the fact that he was going to do the interview is that he really believes that the more he makes public about what he saw and what he knows and what he can document, the safer he is. Um, he's, I think, worried that if, this inf if the information that he's got is only inside his own head um, or in his own you know, electronic devices and things like that, that that's too easy, it, it's too easy to make that go away. Um, and that to the extent that the, the things that he knows can be made public and checked out and verified and documented and investigated, he feels like, A, the truth will become known and he will be safer. And does he, does he expect this? Now, she, of course, they're talking about Lev Parnas and the interview that uh, Rachel Maddow did with him. And that is very true. I've often heard that myself from people on the inside, that when you know information, if you can get that information out there in a mass, uh, you tend to be a little bit safer. Now, my only big concern for Lev Parnas is he's on the inside of that prison. And what he's not really coming forth about, even with those that are interviewing him, um, Maddow and, of course, uh, Anderson Cooper, is the fact that he is far more linked to Trump in organized crime. He kind of deflects from the organized crime aspect and calls it more of a cultish uh, environment around the president. Now, and again, for me, I'd have to say alleged organized crime. I know the individual that put all this information together that I shared with you, and I didn't even share maybe a one thousandth of that information. Uh, it is a very well documented uh, string of evidence. So uh, I'm going to just share with you a couple of little pieces, though, that I saw in that. Uh, and just, just to kind of set the case. Now, this is the interview that... Um, and I actually do have some notes here. I want to make sure that I do follow these notes here uh, that Lev Parnas is doing with Anderson Cooper on CNN. I want you to listen into this particular clip right here, starting at the 306 mark on a 10 minute, 14 second video there. Uh, Anderson Cooper, and we're going to play this to four minutes and 46 seconds. I'll listen into this right here, and then we will address this. For them to do an investigation. In terms of who knew about what you were doing in, in Ukraine, did Vice President Pence know? Of course. Because, I mean, his office has said he, he was unaware of, you know, that he had met with Zelensky after not going to the inauguration but he wasn't delivering a, a message of a quid pro quo. Look, again, like I said, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to get the truth out. I got my records. But I how do you know that the vice president would have known what Giuliani was up to? What you because were we would speak every day. I knew everything that was going on. I mean, after Rudy would speak with the president or, or come from the White House, I was the first person he briefed. 
I mean, we had a relationship. We were that close. I mean, the, I mean, we were together from morning to night. I mean, he took me. I mean, every so, interview he would do, I would be sitting over there while he was doing the interviews. I mean, so Giuliani knew everything you were doing. Everything he was doing. You're saying Vice President Pence knew. I don't know if my Vice President knew everything we were doing. I, I'm sure he was. But he knew. Uh, he was better than pro quo. Of course, he knew. Everybody knew. There, everybody that clo was close to Trump knew the, uh, that this was a thorn in the side and this was a serious situation. Bolton. That's, Bolton. Mulvaney. Mulvaney. Uh, Bolton, I don't think, agreed with it. I think uh, there's certain people that agreed with it and didn't agree with it. He, he called it a drug deal, according to Fiona Hill. I think Bolton is a very important witness because I think between me and Bolton, we could fit in all the dots, I think, uh, because I was on the ground there and he was over here. I and mean, you'd be willing to testify? I would be very willing to testify. Yeah. Now, here's what's interesting. And of course, uh, I guess you can kind of get the picture of this already. And maybe I should have made this more clear for those of you that have not listened to these interviews uh, with Lev Parnas. Uh, you know, Lev Parnas, in the information we shared back in November, uh, was a major campaign contribution donor to the uh, Trump campaign, but also we also shared with you many other campaigns, including DeSantis here in Florida. Uh, there were other uh, gubernatorial races, senator races that he and his partner uh, Igor Fruman were involved in uh, giving large contributions to. They, of course, he. Uh, many, many businesses he is involved in, and we have a lot of that documentation. In fact, in the interview that I did, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the video that we did back in November, we didn't even touch the surface of the connections of Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, uh, even with the documentation that I have. We just shared a very small bit of that information that connected him to Trump, also Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, all these different men are in together. And of course, Rudy Giuliani was already distancing himself from him. Uh, now, I'd actually sent a message to Ray, uh, Rachel Maddow that uh, just, I don't know if she'll ever actually read it or not, but just as a thought there, I said it was uh, that question right there that Anderson Cooper asked him, that was a key question. Now maybe she did ask him that as well, but just from what I'd been able to uh, look at the short clips of her interview online, didn't get to see the whole thing, I didn't see that question brought up on her side. So in all fairness, she may have asked that question too. Uh, but. I want to share with you right here, though, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, the connection there of Lev Parnas. Uh, and this, of course, is in 2019. And uh, as far as that connection to uh, Mike Pence actually knowing when he says this. And of course, keeping in mind, Lev Parnas is only coming on board with this uh, and I kind of I have to kind of agree with President Trump when he says, I think he's just trying to get his sentence reduced. He's cooperating, going to get the Democratic lawmakers on his side to reduce his sentence. President Trump is probably right about that. I, I hate to say it, but I agree with him. I believe the president's right. Because to, for me, listen, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, what you are. It doesn't matter to me on the political uh, spectrum here. What I care about is what is true and what is a lie. You know, because I stand for truth, not for lies. All right. So President Trump, He's right. The man is only trying to save his own skin because he's not revealing the deeper connections that he has to Trump. All right. He needs to he needs to show enough connection to Trump that he did have a relationship with him that can be substantiated and proven and verified. But he doesn't want to reveal everything because he's deep involved in organized crime. I guess if that ever comes out that the rest of this, uh, then he probably will be willing to make more uh, negotiations in order to get his own hide free from all this problems that he's in. All right. Anyway. The source that I have, when he had put all this documentation together, one of the things that he put in here was on September the 1st of 2019, Mike Pence, this is from our November 10th video, amended, does Biden know Trump's connections to Ukraine? You can look it up on, the, uh, on YouTube, the internet, you'll find it easily. But anyway, Vice President Mike Pence was at a meeting in Warsaw with Republic uh, re Representative for the Ukraine Press, uh, President Zelensky, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, when he was in Warsaw. Of course, he just put that question mark in there. Main thing is Mike Pence was meeting there with uh, Ukraine's President Zelensky. Well, the strange thing is, is the very next day, 
David Korea and Lev Parnas, they minted a corporation in Florida called Protect Services in Orlando, Florida. Kind of weird, don't you think? Uh, now, of course, on here, you look at some other ones that we have in here. We're Trump. This is back in 2014. Again, David Korea, the connection, Trump, and, and just the oddities. You know, you can't have all the same coincidences where these men that all know one another are constantly opening LLCs and, and, uh, and, and, and different corporations simultaneously. It's just too strange, right? But anyway, David Correa, of course, Lev Parnas, good friends. They're working together. They opened that. Trump opens up corporations in 2014 with David Correa as well. And it just goes to show the family goes full circle. All right. Now, the point that I wanted to share with you, of course, that being right there. But let me show you something that's also very important as well. This is from The New Yorker. All right. Because you got to remember, I'm showing you that According to Mike Pence, he meets with President Zelensky. While he's meeting with President Zelensky, as soon as that is done, what happens? Lev Parnas is minting a new corporation in Florida. What's all that about? You have to understand. And there's all this talk about money going from one hand to the other, like Paul Manafort. Remember Rudy Giuliani says, uh, we had the article comes out, Rudy Giuliani is trying to find out about a black book that Paul Manafort has. In fact, he has to send an attorney to go ask him because he can't do it himself. It'd be conflict of interest. Uh, and of course, this black book allegedly shows the millions of dollars that are changing hands from Ukraine, padding pockets here in America, also being moved into different corporations. That's why this is so important to understand. After Mike Pence meets with President Zelensky, then David Correa and Lev Parnas, they know what to do next. All right, we've made the meeting, open up a corporation. It looks like some funds might have to do some changing hands. Some of that uh, easy way to move money around. All right, so let's look at here. The New Yorker and this article right here. Uh, I'm going to come back to that quote here in just a second here. This is um, uh, how Lev Parnas became part of the Trump campaign's One Big Family, all right, by Adam Intuis, October 15th, 2019. That's an old article, though, right? And here we see Lev Parnas sitting with Rudy Giuliani, all right? And that's not just some campaign op photo there, you know, guys are sitting there together. Uh, you might say it is, who knows? But anyway, as we look into this, though, some of the things that we highlighted in the article here, like right here, um, let me blow this up big enough so we can see this. Parnas told me that he bumped into Trump plenty of times at events in New York over the years, but that they didn't get to know each other until 2016 campaign. Trump recently distanced himself from Parnas and Fruman, saying, I don't know these those gentlemen. Now, it's possible I have a picture with them because I have a picture with everybody. All right. But it's going to get more interesting because there's also information coming out now that Lev Parnas was working with Fred Trump, his, Trump's father, as early as the age of 16 years old. All right. Just keep that in mind. Right. But anyway, as you go down in the article, then we come up, it says, Parnas said he grew closer to Giuliani after the election. We were good friends. He also, uh, my counsels, okay, he's also my counsel, he said. We were looking to do business together. Lev Parnas talking about doing business together with Rudy Giuliani. And then, as I said, if you look back into the video here that we did on November the 10th, we can see that right after Mike Pence meets with Ukraine President Zelensky, David Korea and Lev Parnas are opening up mining a company right here in Orlando, Florida. That's kind of interesting, right? So let's just kind of play that again there. Just go back a little bit on there. See, and he asked the right question. No, I mean, we were together from morning to night. I mean, he took me, I mean, every so, inspiration, me but he wasn't delivering a, a message of a quid pro quo. 
Look, again, like I said, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to get the truth out. I got my records. But I how do you listen. know that the vice president would have known what Giuliani was up to? What you because were we would speak every day. I knew everything that was going on. I mean, after Rudy would speak with the president or, or come from the White House, I was the first person he briefed. I mean, we had a relationship. We were that close. They were that close. And I've got stacks and stacks of documents to prove especially now that we have the testimony coming out, it kind of helps link that documentation. Now, even Parnas seems to want to say that he only knew President Trump as he got to, you know, once he became president, things like that, right? But, uh, and of course, you know, President Trump said he doesn't really know him that, you know, maybe he had a picture taken with him. Yes, there is a picture there with him with the president. But then there's also the picture of him there with a different, uh, tie and shirt on with, you know, Ivanka and her husband there, Jared Kushner. There's also a picture of him there with Mike Pence, different tie on altogether. Must have been somewhere together, don't you think? Um, I can't actually see. It looks like. Uh, oh gosh, I, I'm trying to think of that guy's name. He's a he's a, he's a uh, senator, but he's a pro-Israeli senator. Uh, also, Donald Trump Jr. He's there with his son there, and, uh, and again with Donald Trump Jr. Another picture there, and a different tie and sh uh, same shirt, but a tie on there. This time, no tie on, so I can't really tell if it's the same time frame or whatever there. But he does seem to have credible evidence, and he says he can continue to produce more and more pictures to prove their times together. But yet, the president says this. What is your response? Well, I don't know him. I don't know Parnas, other than I guess I had uh, pictures taken, which I do with thousands of people, including people today that I didn't meet, but uh, just met him. Uh, I don't know him at all, don't know what he's about, don't know where he comes from, know nothing about him. I can only tell you this thing is a big hoax. It's a big hoax. Uh, we call it, uh, this is the current hoax. We've gone through the Russian... Okay, so the president is calling it a big hoax. And... I personally can't tell you whether or not what their connections are or are not, but it seems that he claims just the opposite. And this particular article right here, the Palmer Report here, says exposed Lev Parnas has been working for Donald Trump going back 30 years. Uh, says here in the article last night, Lev Parnas went on Rachel Maddow's show and spilled the beans about Donald Trump's Ukraine extortion scandal. During a press event today, Trump said this about Parnas, I don't know him at all. That's cute, but it's, but it's very false. In fact, it's been false for decades because Parnas, the article goes on to stay, let me blow this up bigger, uh, because he says here that, uh, Oh, here we go. Trump said this about Parnas. Okay, uh, he, he's, uh, excuse me. In fact, it's been false for decades because Parnas has been working for Trump for 30 years. I don't think necessarily directly like that, but who listen, just, we'll just read what they wrote here. Just how long Lev Parnas has been working for Donald Trump? An old article from the New Yorker reveals that Lev first started selling Trump Organization real estate when he was 16 years old. Lev is now 47, meaning this all started uh, circa 1989. An old Washington Post article also confirms that Lev has been working for the Trump Organization d dating back to when Donald's father, Fred, was still running the show. So much for Donald Trump's claim that he doesn't even know the guy. Lev Parnas' attorney has tweeted various photographs, video clips, which make clear that Trump and Lev have frequently associated with each other since Trump took office. All right. For that matter, Donald Trump can't claim that he's only been associated with Lev Parnas because Lev is Rudy Giuliani's guy. Lev has been working for Donald Trump since long before Trump and Rudy had any kind of political relationship. All right. So, of course, my thought is, is one of the reasons why Lev Parnas came along is because Paul Manafort ended up getting himself in trouble over Ukraine, ended up being thrown in prison, and it seems like Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman would probably be the next two guys they could use to help uh, deal with the Ukrainian situation. 
All right, let's go back though and see how long then has Lev Parnas, all these guys kind of known each other. Well, this particular part of uh, the amendment, does Biden know Trump's connections to Ukraine? I did in November the 10th of last year, 2019. I speak in this one here. This is from 2012. I'll play it so you can hear for yourself what is actually being said in here. Now, this, of course, is using the alleged alias of Trump, John Miller. And, of course, some people have said that uh, the news came out that that was never Trump to begin with. It's not his alias. It's actually Trump's, uh, uh, what would you call it, publicist that says this. Well, even if John Miller is Trump's publicist, it does still show the close connection. Because in this one here, we have Michael Cohen, Paul Manafort, John Miller, Victor Vickelsberg, which basically is connected at the hip with Trump in all of their transactions, Lev Parnas and David Correa. And of course, a $2 million bank loan that has been redacted the information on that. Listen to this. That Columbus painting in Sarasota, Florida, uh, which is in relation to Victor Vickelsberg, all right, and Andrew Entrader, who are both charged by the Mueller Council, and their office happens to be on the same block as Trump Tower. Not to mention, on the exact same day, we have another company that was minted called MC Brooklyn Holdings by Paul J. Manafort, possibly connected to Michael Cohen as well. Now, that happens to be one of President Trump's former campaign advisors. And of course, everybody knows Michael Cohen was the attorney for the president. That's not to say on the same day and one day afterwards about Blue Sky Forest Products or Blue Sky Land Management Construction or Strategic Acquisition Groups in Knoxville. You will find that there is a consistency in the types of names in these corporations. And even though I may not name who owns these or they may not be significant in this, they are all linked together, and there are far more hundreds and hundreds of documents that actually do that. The individual that gave me this information, though, is only giving me a small... Didn't get, I, didn't, I don't want to sit here and waste your time with the entire thing, but as I mentioned on here, Lev Parnas as well, going into their strategic global assets. Now, the important thing for those of you, because we're not playing the entire video again, is the timeline. This, of course, is back in 2012. So Lev Parnas is already part of that circle of those corporations that get minted all in the same time frame. And again, some people might say, well, people that are millionaires are always opening up corporations. Well, why is it that these guys that are all connected together in one way or the other seem to want to open them right within a day or two of each other as it started off? when Vickelsberg on November 26, 2012, and then Paul J. Manafort, John Miller, also on the same day, November 26, 2012. And it seems like the message goes down. They do a $2 million bank loan on the 27th the next day. And then Lev Parnas and David Correa pop open theirs right after that as well. All same month, end of the month, within a couple of days of each other. It's consistent over and over and over. So when Lev Parnas talks about having connections and can prove it, oh yeah, he can. He can prove it all right, but will he indict himself in doing so? How much evidence can he reveal before they realize how deep involved he is with the President of the United States and a whole lot of other key allies. This Twitter page here also shows more pictures, uh, same picture with Ivanka and Jared, but now we see him in just a t-shirt there with the president's former wife as well. This guy really got around. Can't make, makes you wonder when and how. All right, so the Rachel Maddox show here, minute 540. We're going to play this little clip here as well for you. My, my lawyer next to me that I no will go back for me no matter what with the truth and I'm, I'm taking a chance my wife is scared my kids are nervous when he says uh, they're trying to scare me into not talking 
Uh, Mr. Parnas is referencing something specific, actually, that I asked him about in more detail in a different part of the interview that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, but what Mr. Parnas describes there as a sort of, uh, what he says is, is, is a cultish environment. Him saying getting out of that cultish environment around the president uh, now makes him regret some of his actions. That thing that he's saying about it being like a cult, that he regrets some of his behavior there. Um, that applies as well to the central claim at the heart of the impeachment scandal, which was this concerted effort that Mr. Parnas was involved in to accuse former vice president. We'll move this up just a little bit as well. And it's kind of interesting that he calls it a cult. This is something that my wife coined, I think, originally on this. That it was more like a cult. But I want you to see where he speaks about his fear. I think that's very important. Listen in. Allegations against Vice President Biden. Uh, Mr. Shokin makes allegations against Mr. Biden. Mr. Lutsenko also makes allegations against Mr. Biden. Do you believe that those allegations were true? When we were dealing with it, when I was in the middle of the thick of things, I think I was kind of, in, I, I keep saying it's like a cultish uh, environment uh, being around President Trump because, I mean, like I've been in D.C. for two years. I've never left the Trump Hotel type of a situation. So uh, I truly believed seeing different information that was handed to us at that time that uh, Joe Biden was doing something illegal. Uh, not so much Hunter Biden, but more Joe Biden. But after analyzing all the evidence and sitting back and really, uh, what's it called, understanding what's going on, I don't think that, I don't think Vice President Biden did anything wrong. I think he was protecting our country and um, getting rid of probably a crooked uh, 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 attorney general. And uh, people use this uh, to their advantage. A lot of rich people in Ukraine have their own agenda and they use us here for their own political uh, stuff. So I think this is, was a big one. In terms of the material that was handed over to intelligence, um, on March 22nd, Mr. Lutsenko texts you in Russian and there's a translation that's provided by the committee. Uh, it says, it's just that if you don't make a decision about madam, you are bringing into question all my allegations, including about me. So when he says madam, is he talking about... Ambassador Ivanovich. Ambassador Ivanovich. And when he says my, all my allegations, including about B, Burisma. is that about Burisma and Correct. Biden? Yes. Okay. And is it, do you know if it's Burisma or Biden? I guess it could be either. It, it was always Biden. Burisma. Okay. <clears throat> It actually kind of went beyond what I was wanting to share with you. Uh, but I will say this, when he talks about he believes that Biden was innocent. I don't. I personally don't believe that Biden is innocent either. Uh, but uh, for me, it doesn't matter. Like I said, Democratic Republic doesn't make any difference. And I'm sure he is playing into the Democratic card there because he needs the Democrats on his side maybe to get his sentence reduced, as President Trump suggested that that's what he's up to. Uh, so he's willing to take and speak out because he doesn't want to stay in prison. And, uh, and, and yet at the same time, I'm sure that all sides had their little piece of the pie and getting their millions out of Ukraine at the end of the day. And of course, Ukraine's trying to get their millions and billions out of the U.S. in aid in order to fatten up their pockets and their own companies there. But the fear factor that he brought in, uh, of course, having a lot to do with, um, uh, well, I uh, thought I had it in here somewhere. Ah, where did I put it? Of course, was his great fear was Attorney General, uh, uh, Mr. Barr right here. This is his biggest fear, as he told Rachel, Rachel, Rachel Maddock, uh, Meadow in the interview that he had there. He said this was the man that he feared the most uh, of what he could do. And of course, uh, uh, Bill Barr, he is uh, the Attorney General. He was born Jewish, converted to Catholicism. And uh, I could only imagine how much that fear would be there. So it shows that he has a loyalty on both sides of the aisle. And it reminds me of the interview that uh, we did with Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney. And it would be a reason why there should be some fear there because of the power of the Jewish lobby. Listen to this. He's an agent of the Israeli government with a stranglehold on the United States Congress with its power and influence. The group has been accused of being strongly allied with the Likud Party of Israel and the Republican Party in the United States. So, 
Congresswoman, do you agree with the critics of APAC? Please tell us what happened to you. <laughs> well, um, I guess you could say I do agree with the critics. Um, what happened to me is, uh, you know, it was not by design. So it, it goes energy. Uh, energy committee is a money committee because, of course, that's where your oil and gas interests are, your uh, your uh, nuclear interests are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. International relations is not a money committee, right? Because it's basically about U.S. foreign policy. But because I had studied U.S. foreign policy and international relations, the relations between states and among states and non-state actors, this was something that was very interesting to me. And of course, I had a very uh, strongly held belief that U.S. foreign policy should be based on, on the protection of human rights. And so, therefore, my motivation was different and the output that I wanted to achieve on that committee was different. Well, it didn't turn out to be so, because in the end, I ended up getting kicked off the committee because my values were not in alignment with the values in Congress of the powers that be. And so on, it went for me. Well, you know, uh, Congresswoman... That kind of sums it up right there. Her values were not in line with that of Congress's values. Of course, Cynthia McKinney, in this interview that we did back on March 18th of 2019, uh, she shared with us how she uh, fought APAC, where they had required congressional uh, new members coming in to sign their pledge to the state of Israel. She said, I'm not against standing with Israel, but of course, you know, where do we draw that line? I thought we're Americans standing for America first. And of course, this is where she ran into a lot of problems herself, even lost election. She did serve 12 years in the Congress, uh, something that was just an amazing feat for her to pull off. But this is the reason why I can see why uh, Mr. Farnes is afraid of William Barr. He has power and pull on both sides. Uh, he has that right, right wing evangelical side backing him as well as APAC backing this man. Uh, very powerful man indeed. And he made that quite clear to Rachel Maddow in the interview that he was fearful of that. Uh, anyway, imprisoned Paul Manafort is Rudy Giuliani's guide on Ukraine Black Ledger. As I mentioned to you earlier, Rudy Giuliani consulted the imprisoned Paul Manafort through a lawyer for the investigation into the allegation that Ukraine aided Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election. Uh, the repeated outreach centered on the Black Ledger, which purportedly showed millions of dollars of secretive payments from ousted pro-Russian Ukrainian President uh, Viktor Yanukovych to Manafort, and whether it was used to convince U.S. authorities to reopen a case against Manafort. Uh, we kind of know a little bit about that as well. I'm not going to go into it this time. I actually did that uh, that particular broadcast a little over a year ago where I showed the connections to the Black Sea Cable, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, Rick Davis, and of course the money that changed hands and ended up in a little small town called Lebanon, Tennessee, where they were doing another venture, some kind of a Christian theme park uh, they were going to open there. And it's also a part of another little theme park that was opened up in South Carolina. And of course the, the bigger and bigger it gets with all these mi just hundreds of uh, corporations and the connections to all these men together is just just it'll just blow your mind away all right but anyway uh, this one here though goes into another situation and uh, again this is in 2018 still showing you the connections there uh, to that Trump circle uh, Michael Cohen uh, we can see there uh, Victor Vickelsburg this is uh, back in April of April 10th of 2018 and all the companies that were being minted again this John A Miller whether it be Trump using an alias or whether it was his uh, uh, this guy that allegedly is uh, Trump's uh, um, oh gosh what do you call those guys uh, Press guy, we'll just call him that. But anyway, Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, again, mining a company in Delaware, Global Energy Producers. 
and, uh, and it just goes on and on and on. It just seems to never stop all these connections. So when Lev Parnas talks about these guys being connected, they really were connected together. I want to play something for you, though. This is uh, in the same interview. Amanda, does Biden know Trump's connections to Ukraine? I think this one here will really speak a lot to it. So we'll play about a minute of this part of the interview. The source that I had told me that when the Mueller investigation was going on, they never were given the scope to search these companies that could have linked all these people together. They have more of a, 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 a withal to be able to find out the details of these corporations because those that are open in Delaware, it's very strict guidelines. It's very difficult to figure out who owns what when it comes to Delaware. But anyway, President Trump makes a very odd phone call to the Russian president, and he offers helping in fighting the Serbian wildfires. And after knowing the information I know now, I cannot help, and it's, and it's only a conjecture, but I could not help that it was coded information, because it says President Donald Trump has offered help to the Russians in combating wildfires raging in Siberia. The Russian embassy said on Wednesday, right, and you drop down, it says President Vladimir Putin appreciated the gesture and would take Trump up on the offer if needed. For now, Putin told Trump that Russian military aircraft was, were deployed to control the situation. Now, it's not to say that there's not a fire going on in Siberia at the time. That was very true. But a lot of critics also noted, though, why did President Trump even bother to call? It seemed to be unusual. Well, it is unusual. And I think in my own personal opinion, they were discussing the situation because of the connections between Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, and of course David Correa, and, and, and all the men that are related to President Putin that are related to President Trump. It was a fire. It was a wildfire. And a wildfire they needed to put out. All right? Let's take a look here, 2019. Um, it says here in the note at the top, our evidence financially ties Trump to El Chapo and Dmitry Rubolev. El Chapo, the Sonoma cartel, wants to return on his money. I think we actually talked about this one here, unless he's just put the same note in a different all right, I'll kind of go into it with you because uh, I make that comment. I'd already talked about it. That was earlier in that particular interview there. But what's important to understand is after Trump uh, has this very interesting conversation with Putin about putting out the wildfires, I think the thing is, is and of course my conjecture is that what was going on, there was a growing problem with Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, the connections to Rudy Giuliani. They needed to distance themselves from that because these men, like Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, Rick Davis, were all connected to Putin on the other side of the aisle there. And that created a big problem. So what I brought up, uh, or what I shared with you guys back then was the information that was shown to me. Starting on July 18th of 2019, Trump, that's when he held up on the Congress approved military aid to Ukraine. Got to keep in mind, Parnas is over there. He goes there when, uh, when Giuliani's there, He's and this is his own claim now. And of course, when I was bringing things out like this, everybody thought I was lying to him. Well, now Parnas is telling you he was there, right? And then also he claims to have been there when Mike Pence was there. And I, and I showed you already earlier how that he opens up a corporation the very next day after Mike Pence talks to Zelensky, right? So anyway, what happens though? Then what happens is right after that, Dmitry Rabolilev, another uh, Russian, uh, Ukrainian, uh, I should say, Ukrainian tycoon there, multimillionaire. That's the guy, if you remember, when Trump's plane and his plane happened to be at the same time in Las Vegas. The next thing you know, they're both at the same time in North Carolina. North Carolina wouldn't have so much of a trouble with because Rybolilev, also his office is in North Carolina, has a huge factory there. But that one out there in Las Vegas, that seemed just to be a little odd at the same time their planes are sitting at the airport. They made a big to-do of it. But what people didn't know about is that Rybolilev and Trump and all these other guys seem to open up companies at the exact same time again, just like always, right? So July was a busy month, right? Blue Sky hops up, another bunch of companies there. And then, of course, Trump, uh, call from Trump to Ukraine President Zelensky, uh, uh, encouraging him to, as we know, uh, do that investigation on Joe Biden. 
Well, once that gets taken care of, we have seven uh, on July 31st, because then the can of worms breaks out because now it's being leaked out what went on about Trump doing this mess there. And so Trump, he, uh, a, the, then, then we have the uh, note out of out, uh, online evidence. Oh, wait a minute. Trump, Putin have met worse than current Trump's Ukraine firestorm. Okay, that's over the firestorm itself. That's when he calls President Putin to give him his, uh, you know, I can help you with this fire that's going on. And then oddly enough, the same day that President Trump calls Vladimir Putin saying, do you need help to put out the wildfire? And Trump, uh, Putin says to Trump, no, I got it under control. Don't worry about it. Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman well, what do you know? The global energy producers that they minted on 411.18, these guys end up in jail. Looks like somebody did a good job putting the fire out, didn't they? They end up becoming the fall guys. Maybe this is why Lev Parnas is willing to testify against Trump. Maybe he realizes he got set up to be the fall guy. See, now, what else do we have in here? Also, a couple of months later in September, Trump, the hold was lifted on the Ukrainian money after things kind of quietened down. And Dmitry Robolalev, the very next day, bust open another Delaware Paradise at Blue Sky LLC Corporation. So it seems like Robolalev really makes some really good money while Parnas and Igor Fruman end up being thrown under the bus and trampled over by Putin and President Trump. At least that's the way it's starting to look. You know, it just gets stranger and stranger all the time. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, listen, in closing, one thing I wanted to share with you. You remember we talked about, uh, uh, it's a little off the subject there, but we were talking about how President Trump, when he moved our troops out of northern Syria said he was bringing our troops back home never brought them back home but he said he was bringing them back home right he's going to keep his campaign promise and all of our Trump supporters were jumping up and down saying Steve he's just helping to keep his campaign promise but the troops didn't come home right they just got relocated I told you how that Turkey was sent in to actually liberate ISIS from the prisons there um, I don't know a lot of people didn't believe that either right well I had forgot that Congressman Garrett, we had him on, he was still Congressman, it was his last year in office, and he also made a very interesting connection with Turkey and ISIS. Listen to this here, just in closing. ...that he made with them in exchange for withdrawing our troops, uh, or do you really believe that uh, we have defeated ISIS? Uh, which seems to be more of a joint effort. Uh, you know, Russia's trying to defeat them. The Kurds are trying to defeat them. We're trying to defeat them. Uh, or, do, or what do you think is happening? But he's not defeat ISIS when it's convenient for them. I mean, I think if the SDF had it to do over again, and I don't know this, someone's told me this, uh, they may have left ISIS in Najin just so the Americans didn't leave and subject, you know, everything between Membij and the Jazeera province uh, to attack by Turkey. Uh, so there are people who say they're trying to defeat ISIS, but they're not, right? Here's a great example, and this is beyond the purview of your question. Did you hear what he said? There are people that are saying they're trying to defeat ISIS, and they are not. Congressman Garrett, listen a little more. Let me go for a second. Outside Jarablus, where the pre-Syrian army is shooting at the, at the Syrian Democrat forces, with that Turkish base just a, a couple of miles away, what I was told by the people on the ground who I, obviously everybody engages in propaganda, but I had no reason not to believe was they looked through the field glasses the day after the Turks said we've driven ISIS out, and it's the same bad guys in different Turkish sanctioned, sanctioned uniforms. Right? So some people are trying to defeat ISIS, and some people are trying to exploit this chaos to advance their own agendas. What do you know? Same guys, this was ISIS, and they just put them in Turkish backed uniforms. Interesting. I thought I'd share that with you just kind of in closing. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I know it's not popular to hear the truth, uh, but if you want to listen, you want to hang around and listen, or you believe that we're trying to tell the truth, get the truth out there, please stay and, and join us there. You know, and honestly, if you don't believe it, don't listen. I wouldn't hang around. 
I mean, the Pharisees always hung around Jesus no matter what. I mean, they didn't believe anything he had to say, but they hung around anyway. So, listen, we love you guys. We pray for you because my desire is that your eyes will open up to what really is true. God bless you and good night.